Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Oh, that was cheers. so sad. You couldn't hear the cheers because well, there's caramel. Well, it's happy because there's a, a nice caramel rim. Caramel or caramel? I'm a caramel guy because I'm from Boston, but now that I've been in the South, I'm a caramel man. All right, caramel man. Well, this is uh, the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and your money. And today we're taking a humble trip down memory lane. So (laughs) for any new listeners out there, you might know that Rachel and I also co-host The Ramsey Show every week, where we talk to live callers, we answer their personal finance questions on the radio, live on the air, and we've been doing this for a while. And, yeah, you know, you get some, you get I think some, we're, we're pretty good at it. I mean, you get shows and you think, we just nailed it. Like, Crushed that it. was so good. And then you get shows and you think, ooh. Yeah. We're only human. <laughs> we're only human, Rachel. And so there's- We do mess up sometimes. There's moments that we wish we could take back, wish we could do differently, yeah. if we could go back and revisit them. Some callers that you think, oh man, I would have done that differently. But unfortunately, it's live on YouTube for the rest of your life. So <laughs> it's there. there's perks of the job and there's also that. Oh, so also that. that's today's episode. It's hashtag no regrets, <laughs> but like maybe a few. So. A little bit. Uh, and so while we're going down memory lane, what are we sipping on, George? We are sipping on a bourbon apple cider mimosa. And we're going to give you a rating, reveal the cost per glass at the end of the episode, and give you the recipe in the show notes. So stick around till the end for all of that. It's very, uh, it's very great. Very delicious. It's very great. Very great. To Rachel. <laughs> very. I can't tell if that was sarcasm, but you'll find out oh at the end. Oh my gosh. Okay, George. So here's what we need to know first. Like in social situations, work situations, right? You got you got speaking engagement, you got media hits live on TV, you have interviews you're doing with other podcasts, you know, even down to like church small group events mm. or I don't know, you could insert any situation. Do you do you find yourself naturally more more cool and collected and have fun with those Ooh. things? Are you you know what I mean? Or are you more introverted, you're th- like self conscious, like thinking through everything like where do you typically I think lean? above the water I try to look calm and cool but yep. underneath my legs are you know we're doing this are you we're doggy paddling to okay. make it through but I think it's like a defense mechanism almost yes where I try to like play off the awkwardness and you know diffuse the situation in any room I'm in yes. so I think if you met me you'd be like wow he's calm cool collected yeah but on the inside, it's like my body is constantly working to make that happen oh wow you know whereas for Rachel I, it's natural very. Who you are is just who you are. <laughs> There's no on and off switch. You know what I mean? Uh, like if, yes. we, if the camera wasn't rolling, there would be zero difference <laughs> with Rachel right now. Uh, Other than more conspiracy theories. But do you have any weird social tendencies? I feel like you're you're like Belle of the Ball in any room you walk in. No, George. You just that's light it up. so kind. No, you know what? The older I've gotten, the more I will leave a situation and replay something. I used oh, to you're nev- that person. I used to never do that. Like, I, oh, I should have, oh. I never would do that. And now I look back and I'm like, oh, man, I hope that was okay that I said that. I will, like, overthink it. I mean, maybe, like, two out of ten times. It doesn't happen a lot, but I find myself doing that where I used to That's not. That's fair. Are you, would you consider yourself extroverted versus introverted? Yeah, oh, for sure. I need people. Okay. Yeah, you're a people person. You're in- I think I'm introverted. I think As you I are get introvert. Older. I yeah. think you are. I like people. Yeah. But then I can go stare at a wall. It's all about all how you recharge. You recharge. Yeah, I don't recharge unless it's the right people. With you, recharge. Oh, fa- fa- George, full With battery. some other people full in this room, Rachel, this. D- fully <laughs> drained. <laughs> but you know what I mean? In our line of work, some people, they look to take from us. And it's not a malicious thing, but they're, they're looking to be entertained. Rachel's going to tell us a funny story. You know, <laughs> George is going to have a little quip that's going to make me dog, laugh. Dance, dog, That's how it can feel internally. <laughs> dance, little poodle. That's the pressure I feel. Do you feel that? Yeah. Oh. People are wanting to be entertained. I've set that bar too high, Rachel. <laughs> no one expects that from you. They expect, well, here comes Rachel. She's going to be a real bore, real snooze fest. Snooze fest, Rachel. Yeah. George, be funny. Be funny, George. That's tough. Uh, okay, The Ramsey Show. We're talking kind of about that, this yeah. episode of our Rag Rats. Uh, how were you the first time on The Ramsey Show? Um, I was... A little bit nervous. It was a different environment because I had yeah. done a lot of hosting here. It's not like it was my first time on camera or on stage or whatever. But there's a nervousness. Like when you're next to Dave Ramsey, the goat, Yes, you're just like, don't screw this up. Don't screw this mm-hmm. up. Don't screw this up. So that's constantly going through your mind. Mm-hmm. Now, I just came off the Ramsey show. I don't know that my like heart rate changes. Even yeah. went up. Yeah. There's still an element where you know. Your body knows. Like you were live on It's the on most air. nervous I get 
uh, I don't anymore, but and I look at my my job overall, it was the most stressful. I didn't you like, it. like just like looking forward to it, like wow, this is going to be so. Fun. No, it was tough. Versus like going on stage, you light I could up. do that. I could do a, a media hit, right? Like yeah, you're you on, love the media. Hits. Yeah, you you're on TV. Those. That's great. I'm great with that. Like all all of it, but uh, the Ramsey Show in particular, I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't. My my. I yeah. would, it's a different level of pressure. My heart would be show. fast. I don't know. I didn't like it. And then one time I had a host by myself. And oh, that's that, right. And I almost had a panic attack, I swear. I yeah. really think I did. Well, and last time you did it, you grabbed Winston. And I did, because I was. I, it was my second time ever doing it, and I thought, someone's got to save me. And then America it, fell in love with Winston Cruz. And that's when the spouse comes in, saves the day. Wow. Saves the What's day. What's the but most yeah. challenging part of the job as a co-host on The Ramsey Show? On The Ramsey Show? Um... I mean, I do feel a level of responsibility that people call in, and my prayer would be that they have other people in their life, that they— That we're not just the one thing, they're, and then like, whatever they say, I'm going to yes, go do it right now. but George, now. I think there are people out there that it is. It's we're like, whatever have. you say, they really are going to do, which I appreciate that trust, but I take that— It's like a big responsibility. It's a heavy weight. So when you think through it, it's like, oh my gosh, I take that of like, any question— that I answer, I do try to think through, like, if they take this action today, am I setting them up well? Right? It's, it's yeah. kind of, that's a, I don't no, know. No, I feel that. It's a responsibility. And we, we answer a wide variety of questions, some of which we don't have the answer to. There's not a pretty answer, or it right. takes a further, you know, third party or a professional to get involved. And yep. so that's hard to do in like five minutes while getting to another call yeah. while handling the dynamics. So. And then when you host with friends, like when you and I host together, you know, stuff can happen. I think that's the first call, George. The infamous call with Katie. And the horse her, girl. And her horse. <laughs> can, can we just talk about horse people for a second? Is that, is that like a— I would love to. Are we to. allowed to? <laughs> because there's like kind of a stereotype, and, they're, and everyone's going to hate us probably for this. Do you find it to be true that horse girls— Yes. Have a certain stereotype. <laughs> yes. And they will admit. Now, you can't say it about them. They have to come forth with this yes, information. Yes, they, like, are obsessed. They will admit they are crazy. <laughs> they are obsessed yeah. with it, right? They're a certain type have of person. Have you seen on Instagram, and I've seen it on a reel, and that they have competitions of people with a horse head and a stick, and it's not a real horse, and they oh, yeah. themselves physically run and jump over things, and there's... Prize as a medal, and it's very serious. Have you they seen take this? it very yes. And can I be honest with you, Rachel? I Have wasn't you? surprised. <laughs> I wish I was more surprised. So, anyways, all of that plays in to Sweet Katie calling in when you and I hosted. Yeah, on the Ramsey. And show. I will say uh, this is as close as I've ever gotten to being canceled. <laughs> Katie <laughs> joins us up next. She is in Paducah, Kentucky. Katie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How can Rachel and I help? Um, back in March, I decided to do Financial Peace University, and I'm in baby step two. I'm working my way through it. Awesome. Um, I work full-time for the USDA, and I make quilts for people, and I also own two horses and give horseback lessons. Wow. Um, unfortunately, last week, my main horse that I do all my lessons on is injured, and we're taking him to a performance vet here in a couple of weeks to try and figure out what's going on. So my side income of horseback lessons is went from $300 a month to zero, and um, I only make about 34000 a year at the moment, so every single penny counts at the moment. And I'm racking my brain trying to think of new side hustle ideas to make up the difference since my main lesson horse is out. Okay. So what are you making from the quilts every month? Um, it's very inconsistent. It, it ranges from 200 to 350 every other month or so. Every other month. So let's call it 100 bucks a month. Yes. Okay. And you're making 34. Do you think that you could make more elsewhere? Is it time to look for a different job doing the same thing? I started this job back in January. I graduated college in 2021, and I was a veterinary technologist for three years, and I was only making $12 an hour. And then this job with the USDA opened, and so I switched to the USDA, and I jumped from $12 an hour to 17 
And so now this is the most salary I've ever made. Um, so I've already hit a big difference, but I'm not opposed to trying to switch jobs to increase salary. That's impressive. So I just wonder, Katie, if there, I mean, I know, I'm sure you have a love for horses um, and a love for what you do, which is awesome. I just wonder if there's a way for you to either take those same passions or something you were doing in your previous job where, you know, maybe animals are still part of your career, but, but right now is the best time to be making money, Katie. I mean, the, the job market, it's unbelievable what people are paying now for labor. Um, is, is incredible. So for you to replace $300 a month, I don't have any hesitation that you can do that even by just driving Uber and doing oh, Uber yeah. Eats. I mean, there's so many, so many side hustles like that that you could pick up and oh God, in a heartbeat could be making more than 300 uh, a month. But your goal too is to, to have a career of something that you're passionate about and that you love. Ken Coleman talks about that a lot here on this show. So I would love for you to find something uh, that maybe is just more full time instead of kind of piecing these things together that gives you more of that consistent lift to be making more money uh, unless you find a different way to make more money doing these things. But I'm not I'm sure. I'm just thinking dog sitting, dog walking, uh, pet sitting, boarding. You can make really good money doing that, Katie, with your love for animals. Have you uh, seen a need for that in your area? Well, I live in a very rural area. Um, I know it said Paducah. I actually live in Murray, Kentucky. I'm about an hour from Paducah, and okay. I live in a town about 30,000. Okay. And um, I, I switched from being a vet tech to working for the government because of the pay raise that I got. Um, and so instead of working 60-hour weeks as a technologist, now I work 40 hours a week, make more money, and then I had extra time to do the lessons and the quilts. And with this cost of fuel, I'm scared to like DoorDash or anything. But since I live in such a rural area, I'm not even sure if that would be a possibility or dog walking or dog sitting. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a hard challenge. Could you sell the horse? Would you do it? I can't. Why not? Well, um, I've had this horse 11 years. And Katie, Katie, Katie. Never. There's other horses out there. It doesn't even know your name. There's more George, horses for you on the other side. George. Listen, I want Katie to oh win. Oh my gosh. She's got a mess to clean up. George. I'm doing whatever it takes. I'll get another horse later. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. George. The audacity. I was just like, this is the Ramsey Show. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's like, I've had it for 11 years. Like, and sell it. This is in my the head. Show. It sounded like the best idea, <laughs> and to be fair, I still think it was good advice. I went too far <laughs> when I said the infamous words: "The horse doesn't even know no, your name." <laughs> there have been internet memes made about this, Rachel, with my own dogs. The dog doesn't even know no, you. Sell the dogs. My dog doesn't eat a farm. I'm not broke. <laughs> My oh dog's my on a side hustle. Okay, and the best part of all of this is we went to a live event in Indianapolis or Cincinnati, yeah. and Katie's there. She confronted me. Katie is there in person, and out of 2,500 people, over 2,000 people there, Katie and uh, George get the official in person. We got to meet. I got to apologize in person for yeah. what I said. I made her tell me that the dog doesn't even know my name <laughs> so that she could feel what... What you felt. Yeah. Oh, man. And uh, then we moved on. But she's very sweet, and she's she's on track to pay off debt, which yes. is great. She was, like, working on her house, paying yeah. off her house. Yeah, she's doing great. But that oh was one example, Rachel, of me wishing I could go back in time. What would you have done differently, George? What would you have done differently? I would not have said the horse doesn't know your name. <laughs> I would have said, Katie, you're going to have to make some hard— you're going to have to choose your heart. You're yep. going to have to either double your income— or we have to figure out a way a to— A different plan with the horse. —to make some income from this yep. horse, and that might mean— Selling it, yes. For now, maybe you can get the horse back. I don't know how. Apparently, there's horse leases. Oh, the horse community really came at me after this. <laughs> I believe it. Telling me how little I knew about horses, <laughs> and we would say that is true. <laughs> but what I did know is that horses are one of the most expensive hobbies you can yes. find. It. Oh yeah. And now I know, like horse. Yes, horses know your soul, and they are like 
their family, and I understand. And they all like of that. do therapy. It's like there's horse, horse therapy. therapy. That's real. Like they ma- their heart rate matches your heart rate. It's one of the only animals on the planet. Are you a secret horse person? <laughs> no, I've just found Did Rachel. I? There's two types of people when it comes to horses. There's broke horse people, and there's wealthy horse. Well, people. I was gonna say because the stereotype about horses are like like polo matches and yes, Europe. Like right, like you think of this like abundant life. And you have horses. Kendall Jenner has a horse. Like, like you just think of, I don't know. It's very extravagant feeling yeah, to own a horse. Yeah, that's the stereotype. But there's right? also, you know, rural Kentucky and people who make thirty grand are out here with their horses that cost ten grand. I mean, you know, this is a prized horse here. Yeah. And so in my head, I was doing the math for her, going, she's in six figures of debt. She's making thirty four thousand with no real potential to increase her income in her yep. rural area. I was out of options for her. And so help. that was my Hail Mary to say, and I did couch it by saying, I'm going to give you a hard challenge here. Yes. Could that's you true. sell the horse? That's true. You did. I didn't come down and say, you have to sell the horse tomorrow. Yes. That's what right. I didn't have to do was be mean about it. That's right. So that's the lesson learned. That's the lesson learned. Be George. kind. Sorry. And Rachel was there to be kind and rewind. Yeah, and we, we did a whole other segment. We did. We went back Rachel to Rachel came back to help me soften the cancellation of George Cameron <laughs> after that. <laughs> She Sounds was like, good. he didn't really mean that. He's trying. He loves horse people He's secretly. Trying. <laughs> so thank you for that, Rachel. I, there's no one else I would have mm-hmm. rather chosen to be on the show with yes, than you that you. day. Thank you. Can we move on to one of your stumbles? Yeah, I'm, we can do mine. I'm emotionally done. Um, Any cringeworthy clips that come to I mind for you? I had one. From my memory, a guy called in and he needed, I want to say a significant amount of money. I want to say it was like 20000 maybe $30,000. And it was for his girlfriend's mom. And so as we started digging, she was sick. So we were like, oh my gosh, okay, medical stuff. And and he, I think, had the money to help her. I think it was all of his savings. And he actually had the money, I want to say. And as we dug into it, the, the girlfriend lived in a different country. Oh, boy. I want to say like Brazil or maybe somewhere... <sighs> In South, in South America. Okay, so he's in the U.S. Yeah, he was in the U.S. She lived in another country. Has he met her? I think he had met her like a few times maybe. Okay. He had never met the mom and basically was asking us what to do. And and we were very, from what I remember, very sympathetic at the front end because we were like, oh my gosh, like it's, it was terrible. Like, I mean, it's an illness and if you have the money to help somebody yeah. become healthy again, yeah, you. I mean, that's like a reason to spend money, right? And and give money. And so as we were digging in, and then we went to the break, and I think we both looked at each other and thought, that something's off, something's off. And the more we thought about it, the more we were like, oh no, I bet it was a scam. Oh no. I bet it was a scam. You saw the red flags. And in then hindsight. on YouTube, YouTubers, commenters, sometimes we we pick on you sometimes all. you have use. Because you're not kind. There you, go. you were actually very helpful. And everyone in the co- I think everyone in the comments was like He's being scammed. He's being scammed. He's being scammed. How are they not seeing it? He's being scammed. He's being scammed. (gasps) So I wish I had gone back. I would have, I would have, I would have seen right through it. But I'm naive, George, right? I'm with him. I'm not. Your words, not mine, Rachel. Somebody needs help. I don't think you're naive. I think you are. We help them. You live like no one else. So later you live again and help like no one else. Blissfully kind. That is what you are. (laughs) So that is you see the best in people. Yeah. And if that's a crime, put her in jail. Lock me up. Lock me up. Throw away the key. But sometimes on the air, like people also have to remember there's a lot of things going on in our brain. A lot of mental calories being burned. Sometimes sure. we just miss the flags. Yes, yes. Yep. So but um Do you ever get in touch with them? Like sometimes we can get I in touch. I want to say we went back and tried to yes. I think sometimes we, did. we can find their number. I think it was that system. extreme at the end that we thought, oh wow. Let's have a producer call them and yeah. be like, hey, just FYI. So yeah, I think that we like all decided collectively, even all the guys, the engineers in the booth and everyone, I think we all got together and we're like, oh yeah, I think he's being scammed. So we actually, I think, called him back. Oh, and, and let we, him know. Yeah, hey, we were FYI. like, hold on. We wish we had said something different. Before you cover this fake medical like tens procedure. Of, I want to say it was tens of thousands of dollars. So oh it was pretty gosh. wild. But yep, that was one mistake. <sighs> I would well, have gone back. I wish I, I wish I I wish I was just a little mean. George, can you shoot some of that I meanness can in me? Give you some of that. Well, I wouldn't say I'd mean. say, dude. What, what would you have said, don't Rachel? Don't break up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, you're getting scammed, dude. There you go. You're getting scammed. I feel like the dude <laughs> softened it. I would just go with, you're getting scammed. You're getting scammed. I would tread very cautiously I with this fake tread relationship. very cautiously with this fake relationship. And I would end it. And end it. <laughs> Long distance, Rachel. How'd that feel? Rarely works out. That was really good. I'm proud of you. Thanks. 
Okay, George, let's just play the clip so we can uh, so we can all enjoy the cringeworthiness that happened. I know where you're thinking scam, scam, and here I am just oh no, oh. let's help her, let's help her out. Play the clip. The only like question mark I have in my head is I just don't know what healthcare looks like in Colombia, right? Like if this was in America, we could talk about insurance, we could talk about company, like we could have more of a directed path. So I don't I don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to the healthcare system in Colombia. And so it would just be me taking your word that this amount is going to be fine and that there's another $30,000, but they're going to waive that, just like you said. Like, it all, I, I, I don't understand it all. Um, and so, I mean, what I would say to you, James, is like, this is your money. Um, I want to say you're, you're not obligated right. to do anything, right? Um, like, if this was your your wife, who I know she's about to be, uh, your your child, like you when it comes to those kinds of relationships, like you would go above and beyond, right? And for some people, you know, their 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 parents, extended family, you know, whatever it may be when it comes to medical expenses and if you have the means to be able to help in, I just don't want to put you in your situation in unsteady, with an unsteady foundation. Um, so I'm thankful that you don't have debt. You, you feel like you have margin in your budget because you've been able to save up this emergency fund and this is for your house. So if you made this move, um, and helped her with this and, and really gifted her that $50,000. I think that that's extremely, extremely generous uh, and kind if that's, if that's the decision you chose. But, um, but also you want to be able to, to, to know, okay, for my fiance and I, who's going to be my household, you know, what are we going to have to do? What moves um, are, are going to be on pause for us? Uh, a lot of things that you guys want to go forward will have to go on pause. So I want you to map that out as well. It's not saying that's a reason not to do it. All right, George, what's yours? Next one. Set us up. Um, there's a recent one that comes to memory. You know, Rachel, I'm I'm rugged. I People know me as an... <laughs> that was not... Okay. You didn't need to laugh that hard. It's not... Like, it's not even in the realm of possibility that I could be rugged. But... You're a handyman, George. You know how to fix stuff. I'm not an outdoorsman of sorts. <laughs> I don't know much about tools and woodwork. I own like a blower. <laughs> I think that's it as far as tools go. I have like a little, you know. A leaf blower. I have a small drill. But <laughs> what I don't know about is saws. I have scissors. So S on the show. Saws. Saws. S-A-W-S. <laughs> okay. And on the show, I thought that a circular saw was apparently far more expensive than they <laughs> actually are. Here's the clip. All right, today's question's a good one. From Sam in Utah. My wife wants to buy a $1,500 stroller for our baby to be born next year. I think it's unreasonable and stupid to spend that much money. That spend so much money on it. We are debt free, including the house, with a household income of three hundred thousand dollars. She makes about half of our income, and she thinks she has a right to spend fifteen hundred dollars on a baby after four years of infertility treatments. Am I off base? Whoa, that was a loaded question, Rachel. Okay, so uh, does she have the right to spend? Like the all language. of that language, we're not. We're, let's remove that just for the fun of this. Even if she was a stay-at-home spouse and made zero dollars. I don't like this language of like, well, she has no right because she doesn't make this or she makes this. Yeah, it's not That's about- just weird. Yeah, she uh, she has a right because she's part of the partnership of marriage that you guys are in. So she has a right to voice her opinion and all of that, right? Just like he would. Um, yeah, you guys are debt-free, including the house, making $300,000. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. And let's- be clear why, Rachel, because uh, this is an interesting conversation. It goes beyond strollers. This people is about anything mad at me life. for saying that. Yeah. When people say, I think it's stupid and unreasonable to spend that much money on a blank, on a car, on a house. And the, what we always go back to is, are you doing it with cash and are you doing it for the right reasons or are you doing it with debt to impress people? Right. And this is not one of those situations. They follow the baby steps. They make $300,000. Now, she probably looks at him and goes, you're going to buy a circular saw from Lowe's for $1,200? <laughs> That's stupid and unreasonable. And he's going, well, honey, I'm going to, instead of paying for this project or renting it, and she's going, I'm going to be walking around town with the baby. I want a nice stroller to do that with. Yes. So, George, $1,200 for an old saw, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> Rachel, I was, I must have been thinking of, so did people of comment a different about it? saw. What did, did, people, did people panic? Because yeah, a, cir a, some... a circular saw is what? 300 at, like max, like a really nice high-end okay, so circular 200. saw. So you, We're talking you, 50 you to 100 jumped, bucks. You jumped $1,000. My brain went, if you're going to Lowe's, you're dropping 1200 bucks <laughs> on the old circular saw. 
for the house project. Uh, that, at least you know what a circular saw was. I know it's circular, and so that's why my brain went there. I was like, can't go wrong with a circular saw. Yeah, not just a regular saw. No it's back round. and forth. Yeah, ball, no. Paul. I went a step Bunyan? above. Did he? Didn't he cut down trees? Oh, he had an axe. Oh, oh my gosh. no. Yeah. Okay. We're not. We're not good with tools. <laughs> Let's yeah. stay away from tools. Let's leave that to Winston Cruz. Okay. Yeah. But that's when I decided I'm not going to talk about just any kind of tools anymore. Power <laughs> tools, non-power tools. Saws, circular saws. I'm done. None of it. And uh, even then, I will say, guys spend a lot of money on random tools. That is true. That they say they need. Yes. That they maybe use once. That we. That claim. they could have rented cheaper. That is right. Especially, especially large equipment for sure. All right. Um, okay, uh, George. Yeah. So the next one, I was. Here's the worst. It's not like the. It's not a. Most people probably wouldn't hear this clip and think like, oh my gosh, that's a big mistake, what a Rachel. Flub. But in my heart of hearts, if I'm just being honest and vulnerable, it's when you have a non-money personality, a Ken Coleman or Dr. John Deloney on with you, and they correct your oh, money no. <laughs> advice. <laughs> That's bad. And you're like, yeah, it's true. So I was on just, it was like just last week with John, and we were talking to this young kid, and he was in like a pile of debt, no money, had a massive car loan, like almost as much as what he made per year. Like he owed... I think like 30 grand on his car and he made 40 grand. I mean, it was just like a terrible situation. And we're like, you got to get out of the car. He was upside down on it. So we always encourage people like, just go get a smaller loan for the difference. Like sell it, get a small loan for the difference. Because you'd rather have $6,000 loan then, than a $36,000 loan, yes. right? Like we can figure out the, get get a crappy car, you know, all the things. So yeah, I just threw out the idea for him to, to do that. Go get a small loan for the difference. And John... Nicely just pointed out, well, he he can't get a loan. There, no bank's going to give him a loan. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's true. The, Did he do this on no air? Way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. we had this whole moment. So for me, this clip, which, um, here, painful. let's just play it. We'll just play it. Hey, Dylan, welcome to the show. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can we help? Well, um, I'm 20 years old, uh, college dropout. And I put myself in kind of, I would say, a decent amount of debt at 20, which I'm not very proud of. I owe about 70 k in loans. And I just, I mean, I stress every day about it when I wake up. Mm. So I'm just trying to see you guys' view on how I should start attacking my loan. Okay. And how I can pay off my debt. Okay. What's the debt in? Well, um, I have 32 k in a one semester of student loans. And then I have... Wait, wait, one semester? Uh, Where'd you go to school? On Mars? I went to a private Christian school in uh, Minneapolis. But one semester was $32,000? Yes, sir. So their total annual is sixty four grand Per year. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay, that's okay, yeah. Dylan. That's okay. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep <laughs> on moving. What else? What else you got? It's already happened. Um... I'm not very proud of this one, but I actually okay. owe 36k on a car loan. Okay, we can get rid of that. That's okay. What else? And then I have a personal loan for like 3,700. Okay, what was that for? Um, well, basically, when I dropped out of college, um, I saw I bought I got a job in car sales, and I needed a place to live in Minneapolis that was like in a safe area, and that's how much the market rent was 1570, and then I had some income problems of that job so i moved to indianapolis with my roommate and i had to buy all my lease how much would the car sell for dylan um well i had some negative equity in my last car so i kind of carried over to the new loan when i bought this car how much okay um so the, the car is probably worth about like 27 in the market right now by okay. all 30 35 something okay so uh yeah i mean i would I mean, I, I would I would take out a loan of like fifteen, pay off the thirty six, get a cheap car. There's no way they give him fifteen. You though. you do what? I don't think anybody's gonna give him a loan for fifteen. Oh, get the personal loan out. Could you go? To, could you go to a credit credit union and get a loan for fifteen thousand bucks? I mean, I barely get one by my. I couldn't even get one for like the three thousand about my dad co-signing. Yeah. Without the co-signing. Yeah, I think there's no way. So yeah, so again, not like the biggest mistake, but it's one of those like quick, you're just thinking on your feet 
And then that's where I hate when I give some when I give advice out that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's not realistic. You know yeah. what I mean? For him. Like he can't yep. go and take what he called in for to actually implement in his life. And that's our goal for the show is like that's we want to give you things realistic, that you can actually do. Advice. So when a mental health professional, Dr. John Zaloni, correct. He's like, no, he's not getting alone. Yeah, you can't do that. I was like, good point, John. Good point. Well, next you catch John on some anxiety related question. I should. I'd be like, it's the front cortex. Yeah, John, it's not, not, it's not the, the prefrontal cortex. cortex. It's the what post, are you thinking? Postfrontal. Are you kidding what me? What are you thinking? Come it's the on. The cerebellum, John. <laughs> the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and that's a, right. A mental you keep health professional should dopamine. know that. It's not dopamine. It's serotonin. Come on, we all Oxytocin, know that. Oxytocin, Rachel. We all know that. Oh yeah, yeah. We tried. We tried. Wow. Okay, George, you got one more. Yeah. Um. This one I got absolutely roasted for. Mm. And it had to wait. do with four hundred one k loans, Rachel. Oh, oh you remember this one? The old four hundred one k. Was I on with you on this one? No, it was just an epic failure that I imagine everyone knew oh, about. No, it. I don't think I know it. Oh well, you get to find out. Oh, perfect. Let's watch. Thank you for having me. How's it going? Good. How are you? We are doing great. How can we help today? Okay, I have a question. I have eighteen thousand dollars on a HELOC loan at. Currently, it's like 9.2%, okay? So when I was reviewing some other financial things and looking and thinking of ideas of how to, uh, you know, reduce this, I looked into my 401k. Now, my current rate of return is only 47 So I can borrow 14000 of that um, from my 401k. Is that smart for me to do? No. That would be okay. equivalent to you having uh, an arm injury and going, you know what? I'm going to break my leg to move the pain there to make the arm better. And so we're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. And even worse, you're robbing Angela's future with interest. What well, kind of friend would Angela when be? You put back your in- when I was told when you pay back your interest, you're, you're paying your interest to yourself. So That's not a lot. That makes no continue. sense. Then why wouldn't we huh? all be borrowing from our 401ks because it's a money making scheme? I, I just found the gold mine. No, it it's got it's going to the company. You're not giving yourself interest. You're paying the payment back into the account, but the interest you're not gaining. Uh, I'll never forget it, Rachel. And let me tell you, I studied up on my 401k loans after that call. Ouch. So the interest on a 401k loan gets paid back to you. You're basically reimbursing yourself. So if it's $10,000 you took out on the loan, 5% interest, you're paying that 5% interest back into your account. Into your 401k, not yes. to the bank. I, wrote, I was like, well, it's going to go to the company. I had a um, real bad mental flub there. Yeah. I don't know what, sometimes you well, just you know have, what? Can I say this? Sometimes you get they get so nitty gritty down into very specific stuff, right? You get into taxes or all that. Like, it, it yeah. And There's a lot. There's a lot. So sometimes, you know, you yeah. learn on the go. But that's how 401k we learn. 401k interest. I imagine, you know, Dave Ramsey, when he started doing the show, he did. didn't know the ins and outs he of did. every single area of finances. You and learn. So you I lived learn. and I learned, but the comment section did not forget, Rachel. No, they, they... I don't even know if they forgave, to be honest. Yeah, they... There's uh, still some people that have made it their personal mission to, go to cancel you. me over a 401k loan question. Really? Get a life, man. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. I'll live to fight another day and help live, another caller. That's the Live spirit. another day. All right, George, I think we do a little uh, exposure therapy, if you will. Dr. John Zaloni. What kind of sick game is that, Would Rachel? be so proud. But before we dive into that game, I want to talk about a game that I'm loving recently. It's been so fun to play, and that's Telestrations. Oh, smash it with my family. I mean, it is so fun. It's kind of that game of, like, Pictionary, old-school telephone. And I feel like most, you know, any age— Lots of laughter, lots of if fun. If you got a group of people and you don't want to just sit and stare at a giant screen, this is the one to play. I'm telling people you guys. guarantee laughter. Lots of laughter that you hear on this podcast. The same people that are laughing here. The same joy. Have been playing telestrations with their friends and family and laughing too. So yeah. great. So make sure to pick up at Walmart and enjoy the memories. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I think it's time for a little uh, exposure therapy. Speaking of oh. Dr. John Deloney. He'd be so proud of this. Sounds so. We're gonna uh, replace these traumatic show flashbacks with some positive experiences. I need that because we really do. We love helping people with money. So we're gonna redeem ourselves. 
Um, so we pulled some of the most common money questions, George, that we get. And so we're going to give each other like a one minute, boom, 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 oh. live on the show, live on the show. What if we get these wrong? How embarrassing Give us your be? answers. You got 30 seconds to a minute. It's got to be quick. Okay. okay. Uh, who's keeping us on track? Producer Me. Lindsay? Okay. All right. I'm going to go first. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. If I've been investing in retirement for a while, but I've recently decided to pay off my student loan and credit card debt, can I continue investing at least in my 401k match? while I try to pay off debt. Got it. So the controversy here is we tell people to pause all investing, in, even if you're getting a match, in order to pay off debt faster. And people go, it's free money. Why would I do that? Well, we found that psychologically and financially, you're able to pay off the debt faster with a higher chance that you'll actually make it to the end when you have that fire under you of not having the investing match, of going, I want to get back to investing. And when you do, you're going to invest way more than you were and you're going to get out of debt faster. And so we found it's the best way to do it if you're following the Ramsey plan. You still had time. George, just... I might do 30 well seconds. That feels, that feels yeah, 30, more 30 hard. Seconds 30 seconds. Right. Wow. Good luck, Rachel. Right, Here uh, we go. Will you, will, you like, will you be like a... like a, like It's Dan from New Orleans or something. Can you like... Oh, channel it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm on the Ramsey show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rachel. Sarah in Boston asks, my husband and I have been married for three years and we never got around to combining bank accounts. Mm. Is it really that big of a deal? We both bring in a salary from work and we like our spending independence as it is. Uh, yeah, Sarah. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying because a lot of people live that way. But what we have seen over and over again is it's not just about the money. It's amazing when you combine so much of your life and you actually lock arms with this person and say, hey, I trust you in all of these aspects and we're going to work together as a team. Not only financially is it easier to work out of one account, but there is something emotional that happens in a marriage when you are so united on something. Now, if you can't trust your spouse for some reason, right? If there's if there's a... Oh. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> No. Ouch. I'm so sorry. Sarah, that hold 30 on. seconds. <laughs> this is traumatic. Sarah, you're cut off. No, no, Sarah. You're doing great. Good luck, Sarah. <laughs> I'm just Good kidding. luck. Okay, You'll never you, hear the rest. That was just fun. You can okay. finish You'll it. You'll never right, hear next. the rest of that amazing you answer. You won't. All right. Next up, I'm... Um, now I'm nervous. I'm Mary <laughs> from NYC. My income is above six figures, and I feel financially secure. Is a credit card and a monthly card payment really that big of a deal because I can afford it? Is it that big of a deal? I mean, you probably won't go through bankruptcy, but do I believe you could build wealth faster with more peace and less stress if you just decided to use your own money and got rid of the car payment and got to invest that instead? Think about all the wealth you'd build. Go use an investment calculator, crunch some numbers, and you'll be paying off that card today and cutting up the card. Wow. Are you serious? I don't even get to use the buzzer. <laughs> I got this super so freaked sad. out after Rachel Man. got buzzed. <laughs> okay, I can do the next one. You got this, <clears throat> Rach. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this was like so competitive. <laughs> Go. Sam in San Francisco asks, why do I need a budget if I don't have any debt? I get my paycheck, I pay my bills and cover my four walls, and then I spend the rest on whatever I want throughout the month until that money runs out. What's the problem with that? So a budget is one of the places that you're going to be able to look back on a year, five years, 10 years on the road and actually say, wow, I know where my income went because that frivolous spending that you're doing with all that margin, while it's fine and good, I would actually want some intentionality behind it because when you actually put intentionality, you could make different decisions and probably better decisions for your future, Sam. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you should enter You're a welcome. pageant. And download every dollar for a free budgeting app or upgrade to premium for paycheck planning and bank connectivity. <laughs> She had time Boom. for the bonus. I should have wow. added that in, too, because that's helpful as well. I forgot just how competitive Rachel is <laughs> and just how petty. I forgot. <laughs> it's in yeah. there. How competty it is. I didn't know there was a buzzer. Put a buzzer in me, and I got to, like, I know. <laughs> I think we need a new segment on the show called Don't Get Buzzed, and it's a drinking game. <laughs> The drinking trivia game. Yes. That was so good. Nobody steal that yes. for your next Netflix That's show. So good. That was way better than Is It Cake? Why don't is a Netflix creating buzz. Don't Get Buzz? <laughs> don't get It's a trivia buzz. game show involving drinking. That's great. That's funny, George. That's so funny. Well, All that right, brings George. Us to well, the you end. know what? 
So fun. What a you great... You know what? I thought you were going to say something very important after. You know what? I'm just transitioning. <laughs> I was waiting for like the lesson I learned today. Oh, is... okay. So the lesson I learned today is don't make mistakes. It's okay to fail. <laughs> yes, it's always on camera. It's okay to mess up. Just don't do it on a nationally don't... syndicated radio show. That's right. Because you will get roasted. With internet. You got to have thick skin, good. Rachel. And you do it with grace. Not always, George. Not always. Okay, it's almost the end of this episode, though. And it is. we end every episode with... Guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. Linz? Yes. Okay, when you're shopping in a store and you realize you don't want something anymore that's in your cart... Do you put it anywhere or do you go put it back where it belongs? That's a great right. person are you. Can I caveat it with I always put my cart back? No. <laughs> no. The cart goes back, but the items do not. Okay. Here's my caveat with that. I will put back refrigerated items in a refrigerator. Not always in the spot it was spo- <laughs> supposed to go. But you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I would really judge you if you just left that to the side. People do it. A refrigerated, refrigerated item? item? Yes. Oh, that's sad. Oh, that is sad. Sorry, I'm just saying. People. That is my caveat. Is I, that's my line. But if I'm taking an item, I don't go back to like aisle 7C mm-hmm. and put it back in its rightful spot. But it's rare that I do that. So it's not like I'm going around town, you know, just moving <laughs> items around willy nilly. Like that's my around thing. the Walgreens. Yes. Like it's my tiny prank I like to pull at Target. I don't do that, but occasionally it's happened. I will admit. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm with you, George. I think I'm guilty of it. It's usually a small item. It's not like you know it's a giant pack and you're of like, paper towels. I know. And if I'm like an I, if I'm like an aisle away. You'll do it. I can think it. Two her, aisles, forget about it. Forget, She's leaving forget it. Forget about it. I know, on the other side of the store. What's an item yeah. you would leave? You know what I actually, you know what I do more of, and I'm sh- and I'm fine with it, is I actually end up bringing it to the cashier and I just tell her I don't want these things. Oh, yeah. That's Been what there. I do too yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Which so is I'll actually better because they're in then control. They can flag mm-hmm. someone down to go put mm-hmm. it back in the right aisle. But yeah, I'm guilty. I will say if it's at Publix, I don't feel bad because it's such a pleasure for them to be like, I would be happy to go take this back <laughs> oh to its gosh. rightful spot. You know, <laughs> do they ever great. ask you to if they want help like taking groceries out? Always, and I always try to tip them. They say no. Oh, that's, that's sweet. so nice. I've never accepted. And the you know what? They will take offer. you to the aisle if you ask for. Oh, that's if right. You, yes, if you they ask. Do. They've done that. They for me walk too. you to it. This it's, is not an ad for Publix. It but is. It, it is a pleasure. It is amazing. Yes. it's amazing. Walmart. Chargers they're just like, I don't know. I don't work here. I'm <laughs> like, you have a Walmart tag. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, who, uh, help me, help me. They're like, you're the employee now. Here's my badge. Oh my gosh, so funny. That's fun. Okay, George, who finished first? I think it's you. I'm closer. How'd you feel about this one? It was okay. I know, the caramel. It didn't get my goat, you know what I mean? Mm-mm. I think that's an old timey saying no. that people, what kids that are using that now. Are they? Either that or elderly people. I'm not sure which. Oh my gosh. I get confused these days. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, what what were we drinking? We were drinking a bourbon apple cider mimosa. Yeah. It was okay. It was a little harsh. Yeah, I kind of needed a more like a mellow, sweeter drink. Like I feel like this would be one if you drink too many, the headache is for sure happening. It's like there's real. some drinks that I feel like you can enjoy. Like, you know, you're, you're fine. What's your rating? This would be six out of 10. All right. I'll go five out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what's in it. It's got bourbon, apple cider, and champagne. Oh, that's it? That's it. Okay. That might be why. I think it needs <laughs> it needs like an, another acid in there. It needs some kind of sweetener in there. Like the cider wasn't enough acid and sweet for me. Yeah, just not. And yeah. the champagne and bourbon, I don't know that those should mix. I know. And the taste after, it's not great. There we go. I don't know. Uh, but hey, if you sorry, use, Michael, Reddish, you're really convincing people to bartender <laughs> Michael Reddish hey. is gonna be very angry with us because every time we text him a number that is less than less than ten, eight, eight and a half, ten, he's low key. So disappointed. we're sorry, Michael, but we really appreciate the effort. But hey, here's the cost per glass. If you want to make it at home, don't let us dissuade you from trying this <laughs> fine beverage. It's three dollars and thirty two cents per glass, yeah, and you can expensive. find the recipe in the show notes. That's expensive compared to I guess what we the champagne, do. But you can get like you know six dollar champagne at Trader Joe's or whatever. And the headache comes. The there you go. Day, Give so. it a try this weekend if you so dare, um, and let yeah. us know what you think. Yeah.
We could be wrong. It is a beautiful presentation with the caramel rim. Yeah, it is pretty. It's a pretty glass. For caramel sure. rim. Caramel rim. Yeah. Well, you guys, it is closing time. So, as always, if you'll leave a review, it's always helpful. We love seeing it. Love hearing what you love. And make sure to subscribe and share the episode with a friend as you share these around the world. Wow. It is helpful. We're international. To help people be like, well, money can be fun and funny. And it's great. And we can be smart about it. Live, laugh, love. (laughs) Build wealth. So we'll see you next Thursday on the all new episode of Smart Smart Money Money Happy Hour. Hour. (laughs) They're going to have to add that in post.